cheers outside the U.S. Supreme Court after historic rulings on Prop 8 and the Defense of Marriage Act. I couldn't be more proud of my country. As soon as they lift that stay, marriages are on. We remain committed to the continued enforcement of Proposition 8. Landmark cases. Tonight, what's next and why both sides say the fight is not over. Complete Bay Area news coverage starts right now. This is KTVU Channel 2 News. This is a special edition of KTVU News. Good evening, I'm Ken Wayne. And I'm Julie Hayner. Tonight we go in-depth on today's high court rulings, the reaction and the implications. First, today's historic victories for gay rights. The U.S. Supreme Court striking down the Defense of Marriage Act as unconstitutional and dismissing an appeal on Prop 8, effectively upholding an earlier ruling that California's ban on same-sex marriage is also unconstitutional. Right now, KTV's Janet Katsuyama is live in San Francisco's Castro District, where a large crowd is gathering to celebrate tonight. Janet. Ken, let me tell you, there has been a constant stream of people coming down Market Street to end up right here at the intersection of Castro. You can see this crowd. Let me tell you, this goes all the way down the block, at least two blocks. They have Castro blocked off. And I want to have my photographer pan up to the, the Castro street sign. They Somebody climbed up there and put a rainbow flag right up there. There is this incredible feeling of celebration, joy. The Castro is known as a a neighborhood where people party hard and let me tell you this year this day though is a very special celebration and it has a special feel as people celebrate today's decision all day horns were honking and flags were flying high with pride as people caught wind of the supreme court decisions well, they always say, you know, gay, all gay marriage ain't going to happen until pigs fly. You know, the day it happens, pigs will start flying. Well, they're flying. Today, they are flying. Oh, flying as high as the spirits of those who are rushing to the Castro from across the Bay Area to celebrate tonight. We want to get married. You know, I want to become legalized one day, and I want to marry him. Well, this is something that mean, means a lot to me and to everyone, I think. It's, it's the civil rights issue of our time. Crowds are expected to reach the tens of thousands, a release after a nine-year back-and-forth battle that has touched generations through ballot boxes and courtrooms over four words, will you marry me? It just felt very powerful this morning that I could have this new sentence as a gay person. And I'm just excited that it'll be valid and that, you know, the word marriage will actually be able to be used as opposed to that's my partner. <laughs> For those already married, during the brief periods when same-sex marriage was allowed, there is also cause to celebrate tonight. Well, I was one of the 18,000 people that married back in 2008. So for me, the DOMA win is a, mu is a much bigger personal win for me. And I want to show you this sign. Somebody uh, climbed up here on the street sign and put case closed over the road closed sign. The road is closed, though, and let me tell you, they are expecting huge crowds here for this celebration. No shortage of signs, of flags here. As people come out to the, the Castro District where one person said this is the heart of this fight that has been going on for such a long time and they wanted to be here to celebrate. Back to you guys. Janet, it has been going on for a long time. A lot of reason to celebrate out there, but how long will police let them uh, party and keep the intersection, a very busy intersection, closed? Well, Ken, we understand they have the two blocks from on Castro down to 19th closed 18th street two blocks the barriers are up but they say they're only going to be allowing this until nine o'clock the stages the two stages will come down at that point and the barriers and then people will basically be on their own but that's the cue for people to uh, go ahead and leave because they will be reopening the streets all right jana jana live in the castro tonight jana thank you now to the five to four decision and the justice's technical ruling that said nothing at all about same-sex marriage itself. KTVU's Gassia McKellion on the decision that prompted hugs and jumps of joy in front of the U.S. Supreme Court. Same-sex couples joined hands and held them high on the steps of the U.S. Supreme Court building minutes after the high court issued its ruling. Today we can go back to California and say to our own children, all four of our boys, your family is just as good as everybody else's family. 
In dismissing an appeal regarding Proposition 8, the justices said private parties do not have standing to defend the 2008 voter-approved measure. I'm here today on behalf of the 7 million voters in the state of California to express our disappointment. We believe that every vote should count. We remain committed to the continued enforcement of Proposition 8 until there is a, a statewide order saying otherwise. Today's ruling means same-sex marriages can resume in California. We look forward to using the words married and husband because those words do matter. They are important. Justice will be done for loving LGBT couples across my home state. The decision sidesteps the looming question of whether gay marriage is a constitutional equal protection right that would apply to all states. Gay rights advocates say they are still focused on that fight, but on this day they are claiming victory. And with the Prop 8 ruling still fresh, one plaintiff in that case boiled the national dialogue down to one personal question, a request he so probably already knew the answer to. It's the day I finally get to look at the man that I love and finally say, will you please marry me? <laughs> Same-sex marriages could resume as soon as the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals lifts a stay that puts such unions on hold. The court will likely wait at least 25 days before doing so, meaning same-sex weddings could begin again in late July. Live in our newsroom, Gassia Mikaeli on KTVU Channel 2 News. And many of those weddings are already being planned. Gassia, thank you. The vote didn't follow traditional ideological lines at the Supreme Court. Here are the justices who tend to be on the liberal side. Here are the justices who tend to be on the conservative side. And Justice Kennedy is seen as a centrist and the swing vote. In this case, liberal justice, Justice Sotomayor, joined with the conservative side, and so did Justice Kennedy. The two conservative justices, the Chief Justice John Roberts and Justice Antonin Scalia, joined with the liberal side. Look what that did. Five votes here, four votes here. That was the majority that upheld the Ninth Circuit Court's ruling and overturned Prop 8. All right, Ken, thank you. West Hollywood closed down streets today to celebrate the Supreme Court decisions. This is the event at the intersection of Santa Monica Boulevard and San Vicente Boulevard. Many of the key figures in the rulings flew from Washington, D.C. to Los Angeles so they could take part in this evening's rally. The Hollywood community played a big role in the fight against Prop 8 and the battle to get the case through the courts. Several Hollywood directors, including Rob Reiner, raised a significant amount of money for that long legal battle. And joining us now is USF constitutional law professor Julie Nice. Julie, were there any surprises really today? Day. Well, I think the big surprise is that we get the ruling on a technicality. So marriages are very likely to resume on a mere technicality. And as you pointed out, uh, the, the justices did not vote on ideological lines. This is all about this technical question of standing. That's what the uh, decision came down on. But what it means in California is after this very long battle, uh, the marriages will resume. But you talk about the, the technicality. So was it unusual still, though, to see some conservatives and liberals go what you would think would be opposite positions? Well, given that the decision was not really on the merits of same-sex marriage, it was on this technical question of standing, the ideological uh, lines that we're used to seeing really just don't play into that in the same sort of way. So from a constitutional law perspective, it was a very fascinating standing decision, and that's why the justices were lining up on those technicalities. Uh, but so they we really weren't voting on same-sex marriage lines, if you will, per se. All right, Julie, we'll have more with you in just a little bit. Thank you very much. Well, today's ruling lets stand the very first federal decision on same-sex marriage in California. Tonight, part two of my exclusive interview with the retired U.S. District Court Judge Vaughn Walker and the personal criticism he faced after making the ruling on that landmark case. The nearly four-year legal battle over California's ban on same-sex marriage began back in 2009. At that time, Judge Vaughn Walker says he was preparing to retire from the bench, but a complaint titled Perry v. Schwarzenegger landed in his box. The judge says as soon as he picked it up, he realized the importance of the case challenging Prop 8. But I knew that I couldn't walk away from that. Judge Walker says it's too soon to define the Prop 8 case as his legacy case, but he admits it has generated a lot of headlines. It is certainly the one that has received the most attention, and it'll probably be the lead in my obituary. 
He says during his 21 years on the bench, he's had seven or 8,000 cases, but only the Prop 8 case would spark criticism about his personal life. After you decided to overturn Prop 8, the measure's sponsors argued that you should have recused yourself because you were in a same-sex relationship for a long time. What would you say to those people now? I don't know that I really need to say anything to them. Um, they attempted that um, motion without success. Prop 8 attorneys tried but failed to set aside Walker's ruling, arguing he was biased and should have disclosed the relationship. My personal situation was well known during the trial and the proponents of Proposition 8 at that time said they were not going to raise it and they did not raise it. But after the decision, after they had lost the case, they raised it. Needless to say, that puts a different cast on it. Walker makes no apologies for his decision and says he did his part, sending the legal showdown over gay marriage rights to the nation's highest court. I read recently that you had told the Commonwealth Club that same-sex marriage is an idea whose time has come and you're sticking to that belief. Can you explain that? Well, I think it has. You've seen how public opinion has changed. You've seen now that we have moved from two states in 2009, as you say, in which same-sex marriage is recognized, to now, I believe it's 12 states in the District of Columbia. And Judge Walker says he believes public opinion will continue to shift in support of the same-sex marriage movement. But he also said debate over the issue is far from over. He describes it as a story with many more chapters. When our KTV News special continues, we go in depth on what's next. We'll talk live with San Francisco City Attorney on exactly when those marriages can proceed. But first, live pictures now from San Jose. A celebration is underway there too at this hour on this historic day. We'll be right back. We want to show you a live picture in San Francisco's Castro District. Look at the crowd that's gathering there partying this evening. Live pictures of the celebration that's really just getting started. More people are expected to show up. People have told us they are so happy they finally feel equal and now they can marry the person they love. Joining us tonight, one man very entrenched in this legal battle for the past nine years. Dennis Herrera, San Francisco's city attorney. Dennis, you have defended the city since those first marriage licenses were issued back in 2004. What's your take on today's decisions? I think it's a tremendous step forward for uh, the marriage equality movement, not just here in California, uh, but across the nation. And I think the other thing is it transcends the uh, uh, lesbian and gay community. It, 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 today's decision speaks to the great tradition of protecting and promoting civil rights for all Americans. So we're very gratified by the ruling, and the most important thing is we're storing marriage equality here in California. So you popped a bottle of champagne in your office today with your staff. Uh, tell me about that and all of the work that was inv uh, else involved it, in this. It was very, it was very emotional. Uh, we've had a lot of ups and downs over the course of the last nine years, and our office has been at the forefront in, in every state court action and every federal court action um, on this case in the marriage equality movement in California. So, uh, And everybody in the city attorney's office played a role in, in helping us be at the vanguard of the battle. So it was emotional. It was personal. And uh, I think uh, everybody, uh, everybody had a good toast and it was uh, well deserved. How disappointed by the technical nature of the ruling and that the high court didn't rule on the merits of this case? Um, I would say, uh, you know, we, we argued it broadly uh, and we wanted as broad a ruling as possible. But uh, the most important thing was to restore marriage equality to California and we gave them a couple of alternative paths. Uh, a California-only merits decision was one path. And we also argued that the proponents had um, no standing. And having no standing it wasn't just a technical ruling. It left intact Judge Walker's very broad and sweeping ruling that, uh, after a weeks-long trial, demonstrated that there was no legitimate basis to discriminate against lesbian and gay people. And we put discrimination on trial, and that ruling is intact, and the record is there for everybody to see. Dennis, gay people across California want to get married right now. Tell me about the wait. What has to happen first, and when can they get married? Uh, everybody's going to have to wait a little bit. I heard that there were some proposals that happened today, but everybody's going to have to wait about a month. The Supreme Court has a rule that uh, each party can petition for rehearing for a period of 25 days. Then the Ninth Circuit will have to issue its mandate or order 
uh, and that'll take a, a, a few extra. So we're looking at about uh, a month from now, and hopefully everybody can just savor the victory and get ready to plan their marriages for about a month from now. Do you see, foresee any big problems with people or any, any way someone can block the uh, marriages from going forward over the course of the next 25 days, or are you going to do everything you can to get those going? Yeah, I, I heard the proponents uh, talk about how they were, uh, or at least intimate, they were going to continue to fight. They have absolutely no legal leg to stand on. And in the event that they do, I already have the pleadings drafted to go into court to uh, get the federal court to enforce its, enforce its order statewide. And I know that Governor Brown took some, uh, gave some guidance today as well. So I think it's time for the proponents to, to move on to their next battle. All right. San Francisco City Attorney Dennis Herrera, thanks so much for your time tonight. We appreciate it. We also want to point thanks, out that we Julie. did invite Andy Pugna, the attorney for ProtectMarriage.com, who uh, supported Proposition 8, the ban on same-sex marriage, but he was unable to attend uh, our newscast tonight. A key moment for same-sex marriage in California happened in San Francisco nine years ago, and it was a place of jubilation again today. KTV's David Stevenson joins us live from San Francisco City Hall and says some of the key players returned today. David? Ken, that's right. San Francisco is getting ready for a rush of same-sex weddings after today's celebration inside City Hall. The Supreme Court rulings brought cheers and tears to the city officials and hundreds gathered in the San Francisco City Hall rotunda early this morning. Now we'll get to get married in California yeah. and we'll get recognized on the federal level. So this is a really big day for us. Gay and lesbian couples watched from the floor and balconies as live TV and web broadcasts relayed the defeat of California's Proposition 8 same-sex marriage ban and a provision of the Federal Defense of Marriage Act. I mean, today is just a big victory for California, for our community, um, and for our nation. Thank you, Prop 8. <laughs> Kate Kendall of the National Center for Lesbian Rights gave a fiery speech slamming Prop 8. We have lived for too many years under that stigmatizing piece of crap that diminished us and that eliminated our right to marry. A sentiment echoed by Lieutenant Governor Gavin Newsom, hailed by many today as a hero. As mayor back in 2004, he ordered the city to issue same-sex marriage certificates, kicking off this multi-year, multi-court battle. We don't just tolerate diversity, we celebrate our diversity each and every day. The city is now preparing for a flood of marriage-minded same-sex couples. And we're going to streamline the process so that you can t pull your marriage license, get married, and record all on the same day. And City Hall officials tell us they've gotten a lot of calls from people volunteering to marry couples once the ceremonies resume here. Reporting live in San Francisco, David Stevenson, KTVU, Channel 2 News. David, thank you. All right, back now to Julie Nice. And since so the high court ruled that the proponents of Prop 8 really lack the standing to pursue an appeal in this case, do they have any other options at this point? Well, I, I certainly think that because of their deep commitment in opposition to same-sex marriage, we will see uh, probably ever, every effort they can pro possibly make to try to continue to, to delay the uh, uh, marriages resuming here in California. But what happens now is the United States Supreme Court has said there's no standing for the appeal, so now they're out of the case. They've ordered the Ninth Circuit to vacate their decision, so that is a domino effect. They're out of the case, and it really leaves Vaughn Walker's decision standing. And his order was quite specific that a statewide injunction against any state officials from uh, enforcing Prop 8 will go into effect. It should happen fairly quickly once all the paperwork of the court bureaucracy runs its course. We heard Attorney General Kamala Harris today say that all California county officials have to follow this ruling. So places like Solano County, Kern County down in the Central Valley who may be resistant to inf uh, having this go through, they don't have a choice? Not really, and if you think back to uh, when we had Gavin Newsom marriages, as we called them uh, in the early days, the, the California Supreme Court has ruled quite clearly that marriage is a state definition. So now that the state's definition has been clarified with the combination of the U.S. Supreme Court ruling and the old California Supreme Court ruling saying that it's unconstitutional to deny marriage to same-sex couples here in our state, I really think it's a statewide problem, it's a statewide solution, okay. and I think that's clear. All right, Julie, thank you. We want to get a little bit more with you uh, on DOMA coming up in just a bit. Thank you very much. And when we come back, the Defense of Marriage Act and what it means for the tens of thousands of same-sex couples already married.
Now to the Defense of Marriage Act and the High Court's decision today to strike down what it called discrimination enshrined in law. KTVU's Jacqueline Fell is in our Washington, D.C. newsroom tonight with why, in many ways, DOMA is the more significant ruling. Jacqueline. Well, Julie, you know, the Federal Defense of Marriage Act defined marriage as only between a man and a woman. Today, the Supreme Court said that's unconstitutional. They gutted it. They said that you, can no, you cannot block same-sex couples from receiving federal marriage benefits. The Supreme Court came down in sweeping fashion, striking down much of the Defense of Marriage Act, known as DOMA. Gay marriage is recognized in 12 states and the District of Columbia. Now, married gay couples in those states will have access to all federal benefits heterosexual couples now enjoy. The people united will never be divided. The plaintiff in the case, Edith Windsor, was in New York. I cried. <laughs> I cried, okay, but I, I'm thrilled, obviously. But, uh, but yeah, the immediate reaction was just tears. The president called Windsor after the decision. Both California senators voted against DOMA in 1996. Diane Feinstein reintroduced legislation to repeal the rest of DOMA. And Barbara Boxer tells me Congress should go a step farther. States still do not have to recognize gay marriage in their state if someone moves from another state. So uh, we're hoping to change that. Opponents of gay marriage were disappointed, calling the rulings unfair to children. And every child deserves a, a mommy and a daddy, and with this decision, they undercut the needs of our children. Senators Feinstein and Boxer are calling their bill the Respect for Marriage Act. It already has 41 Democratic senators sponsoring it and 161 House members. Reporting live in Washington, Jacqueline Fell, KTVU, Channel 2 News. All right, Jacqueline, thanks very much. Julie Nice, one more time, a quick uh, final thought on DOMA. I think the DOMA decision today, authored by California's own Anthony Kennedy, is going to go down as a major civil rights ruling that, uh, with powerful language both about equality and liberty uh, in only the way Justice Kennedy can talk about those things, uh, emphasizing human dignity each step of the way. So it's going to be major historically, I believe. All right. All right. Julie Nice, thanks for being with us tonight. Thank you. Well, here's where things stand right now. California is slated to become the 13th state plus Washington, D.C. that allows same-sex marriage. Here is a look at those states. California in blue, as the courts still need to act on today's ruling. Delaware's same-sex marriage law is scheduled to take effect next week and Rhode Island's on August 1st. Eight states, including California, allow same-sex couples to join in the civil unions or domestic partnerships and allow varying degrees of spousal rights. Now, the vast majority, 30 states, have no provisions at all for same-sex couples. However, 31 states have some sort of constitutional amendment banning legal rec recognition of same-sex marriages. Some of those states do allow civil unions or domestic partnerships. Thank you for choosing KTVU Channel 2 News on this very historic day. Our coverage on all of this and more continues tonight on the 10 o'clock news. And we will be monitoring that big celebration in San Francisco's Castro District. You see it there live. We'll have much more coming up tonight on the 10 o'clock news. Until then, have a great night.